It's Thursday. It's four o'clock. And we're you're Tony and Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And today we're going to be reviewing your photos and the theme is alive. And that's open to a lot of interpretation. So just be creative and go with it. We also have a news story about tariffs and how that might impact the camera industry, which is already kind of operating on slim profit margins and not doing the best in its history. So Tony has dissected that information. I'm excited to hear what you've come up with. Uh, next week, And we'll talk about the new Canon 90D. Ooh, the new Canon 90D, that's right. And next week we'll be reviewing your street photos. I have taken down our Patreon page uh, and so I'll just be choosing the themes from now on and it's going to get a little weird. <laughs> yeah. But thank you to everybody who has supported us on Patreon. We just, we never really put enough energy into it to get real yeah. traction on there. So we decided just to stop it. Just thank you to everybody. Yeah. Uh, let's take a moment and thank our sponsor KEH. KEH has the biggest inventory of any camera store out there with more than 55,000 items. And you know what? A lot of them are 40% lower than retail because they sell used gear. They also buy used gear. But it's not like just buying a camera from the guy next door or something. Everything comes with a 180-day warranty. So if anything goes wrong, they will fix it for you. And you have a 14-day money-back guarantee. As soon as I started talking about this, my dog started scratching the floor. <laughs> Pixel! She has to dig. <laughs> she must dig to the tariffs. KEH cannot solve your dog problems, but they can help you switch systems. If you wanted to check out Sony or some other camera system, you can sell them all your current gear and then buy new gear at used prices. So check out our sponsor, KEH.com. There's a link down in the description below. And in just a few minutes, we will cover the KEH Quirky Camera of the Week, which is this bizarre collectible gold Leica, literally a gold Leica. That sounds like a euphemism for something, but no, this is literally a camera that I have been scared to death to shoot with for the past few weeks that I've had it. But I did it. I did it. But it was weird for me. Uh, while people send in their pictures, you want to go over a few bits of news? Yeah, I want to hear your news stories because they sounded good. Let's go over the Canon 90D. Yeah, so CanonRumors.com is reporting that Canon in August, at the end of August, will be launching the Canon 90D, an update to what I understand is going to merge both the 7D and 80D cameras into a single unit. So to me, it really sounds more like a 7D Mark III. It has a higher megapixel APS-C sensor, according to the rumors, at 32 megapixels. It will have dual SD card slots, something that 80D did not have. It'll have a full 10 frames per second. And the price, $1,400, really more like 80D price level. So it seems like they're kind of taking the best of both those product lines. Should be a fantastic camera for wildlife and sports shooters, especially given how many great Canon lenses there are for the DSLR system. This is not their mirrorless camera. This is a DSLR. It sounds like Canon's going to keep they're producing those cameras. They're going to stay in the DSLR game. And in their okay. APS-C mirrorless M mount, the they're going to be releasing an update to the M6 which sounds like it'll have the same 32 megapixel sensor. It has a higher possible frame rate at 16 frames per second, but probably a weaker focusing system. And it will have Canon's IAF system. We've been down here for like 20 minutes and the dog hasn't scratched anything. And then as soon as we start recording, the dog just decides it's gonna run Why around. and she doing this? I don't know. She doesn't scratch anywhere except in the studio. Yeah, of course. Now, let's talk about the big news. Trump our president in the United States and oh, yeah, China heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> have been in a trade war. Uh, Trump has been concerned about the imbalance of imports and exports where uh, China is exporting much more stuff into the U.S. than the U.S. is exporting to China. And we're trying to get a little bit of balance. And the way they're doing that is by taxing imports. And Trump has been doing this for a couple of years now. But so far, he has stayed away from consumer goods, preferring to, say, tax agricultural stuff and raw materials, that kind of thing. We're seeing headlines about it everywhere. So I decided to really dig into it and try to be realistic about it, which is our style. You know, we're not even trying to take a, a, a side, but rather just report on what's actually happening and the potential impact on the camera industry, as well as consumers who might be buying cameras. So Barron's reported Trump's tariffs could ruin Christmas. <laughs> And That's no, I don't think they're going to ruin Christmas for a few different reasons, but let's get into it. Trump recently announced that starting September 1st, he would be putting a 10% tariff on a lot of consumer goods, a long, long list. That includes 
digital still image video cameras, but that should include both cameras and lenses and stuff. First of all, this impacts only consumers in the United States. It does not obviously impact all the European stuff. Um, only about half of camera gear right now, about 51% comes from China. So the other 50% comes from other places and obviously wouldn't be impacted by these tariffs. And there are a few different things um, that could impact this. Now, Trump announced that it would be 10% starting September 1st, but then later said that it could go up to 25%. Now, 10%, okay, that's a hefty tariff, but 25%, mm, okay, that could actually be pretty devastating. We don't have a schedule for that. We don't have uh, criteria that would make the tariffs go away or prevent the tariffs from increasing at this point. So it's kind of unpredictable, and it kind of makes everybody in business feel like, I'm not sure how to respond to this. Let's talk about the stuff that would, would be impacted. These are products that are manufactured in China, even if they're being sold by non-Chinese companies. For example, iPhones would be impacted by this, made by Apple, which was started in America, but because those iPhones are manufactured in China, they would be impacted. We looked at the camera gear we have around for the little made in China stickers on the bottom. The Sony A7 Mark III, made in China, would probably be impacted by this tariff, as well as the Fujifilm X-T3. All my Sony G lenses were made in China. Um, all my Nikon lenses were made in China, even though Nikon closed down their China factory in 2017, at least one of them. Um, DJI drones, GoPros, all made in China. Godox, Yongnuo, Insta360, if it cameras or flashes made by these companies, those are all made in China, they would probably be impacted. And generally, it's the lower end cameras and lenses that are manufactured in China. Companies like Canon and Nikon tend to prefer to manufacture the higher end stuff in places like Japan or Thailand, because I guess there are some differences in how stuff is manufactured. Companies have been moving out of China already. Like Nikon chose to close its China factory in 2017. Olympus moved their production from China to Vietnam. And I don't know if these, this trade war was part of that, but smart businesses pretty much knew this was coming because everything else had been tariffed except really consumer goods. Yeah. And a lot of companies are moving out of China, but a big factor is also that the camera industry is collapsing, so they're not manufacturing as enough. So how will this actually unfold? There's some possibility that the trade war will just end and we'll never have to deal with this. Maybe the two sides will come to some sort of agreement and that would be great. Um, the other, another possibility is that prices on these products could rise by 10% to offset those costs, but that would not happen immediately. That's not going to happen September 1st. And the reason for that is we know that the tariff is coming in September 1st. So right now companies are importing as much of those tariffs goods as they possibly can. They're manufacturing fast. Anything that's on U.S. shores before September 1st won't receive that extra tax. And that's why I think it's not going to ruin Christmas because they're going to be pulling in this inventory in preparation for Christmas. And like I said, a lot of companies have already moved manufacturing to other countries, so they won't be impacted. But there could still be gear that's planned to be launched around Christmas time, and they've lined up a factory in China and didn't plan properly for it. And so that those things could have their prices increase. Long term, uh, I think... Part of this will be moving manufacturing to other countries, but part of it will also be uh, robot labor will start to become relatively less expensive as these manufacturing costs go up. And so more and more automation will happen. Robots will put more people out of jobs, but um, that will also allow these new factories to be placed anywhere because you won't be relying on expensive human costs. So you could put a factory outside of New York City if it was manned mostly by robots. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Robots will cost the same to deploy in any part of the world. Some of the stuff made in other countries, the Sony a7R4, a6400, and my uh, G Master lenses were all made in Thailand. I thought it was interesting that the a6400 was made in Thailand, but the a7 III was made in China. So the a6400 being a lower-end camera, they decided to make it in a more high-end place. But maybe Sony is phasing out the China factory as well. They wouldn't tell, publicly tell us that, but that's a possibility. A lot of stuff made in Japan, like the Canon cameras that we have, the Nikon D850, the X-H1, all the Fujifilm lenses, a Sony teleconverter, and Sigma lenses were all made in Japan, too. Uh, you want to look at some pictures? That was abrupt. <laughs> <clears throat> well, what do you think about the terrace? What do you think will happen, Chels? I'm not sure. I don't even, I don't know. It's just, 
something I'm not knowledgeable about is like tariffs and stuff. So I don't even want to speak to it and have a public opinion, really. Okay. I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I, I think it could be a big deal. Companies are operating on really low profit margins now. Um, Nikon is like around 5%. So, you know, adding a 10% increase on some of the best selling products in the United States, it's a small part of it, but it could knock it down by a percent. Companies like Olympus are their imaging department is already underwater. Like they've been losing money for a couple of years, like actively bleeding money. Just one more kind of nail in the coffin for that kind of thing. So yeah, it it's not be, good. No, it's not good for the company. Especially if it goes up to 25%. That would be pretty crazy. I mean, it's not good for these companies for this particular industry. I, I, I personally do not have the ability to assess whether it's going to be good for the United States or for the world economy long term you know yeah these are like long term efforts I, don't, I just don't know i feel like mark here has a perfect photo for our theme alive and this was the kind of photo i was hoping to get this is amazing yeah this just came up first but this picture instantly gets a pick it's absolutely stellar i am going to go into the develop module here and maybe just bring down these blacks and make the blacks a little bit richer um, possibly maybe a little dehaze. I like it. Whoa. Okay. We got a theme going on here. So it's a lot we can do to improve this picture, right? If you look at the histogram, you'll see the histogram does not touch either the left or right side. And that means without seeing the picture, you know, it's a low contrast picture. So you, you can, yeah, usually... You could adjust the contrast, but for me, I usually start by adjusting the black and white points. We have a video at sdp.io slash top tip that, that can help you with that. The white balance is also a problem. I usually start by trying auto white balance. That's definitely an improvement, but you know, you're shooting through glass here and in water and it's going to be tough to kind of nail it. Wow. Wow. Okay. <gasps> okay. This definitely fits the theme. This is incredible. What an amazing picture. Dang. Being born is hard work, huh? Do you want to fix the white balance or is it just not matter because the topic of the photo itself is so intense? I, I don't actually like your fix because I think like the redness of the baby was appropriate. Okay. But yeah. Oh, this is like a very peaceful photo, Johnny. I love your processing. The blacks are very soft and muted and I think that matches the soft light it looks like morning light coming in through the window um i wish i could see what she was doing is she reading she looks like she's engaged in some kind of peaceful activity i wish i could see what that was because i think that's a big part of the story and i'm not really sure what's going on oh my gosh no you can't have none <laughs> so whoa check out this chromatic aberration here yeah. and you can fix that easily um just got to go down here. Let's see. Manual. Yeah, I, well, you can try the, here, let me take over. You can do the profile here and then enable or remove chromatic aberration. And let's see if that did it. I was going to use the dropper. Okay. Because do you see all this stuff? It's like purple. No, it didn't do anything. Um, yeah, because it might be outside of a range, but there is another option here. If you can do brushes now in this latest version of Lightroom, and let's get this a little smaller. And then let's see, defringe. Oh, I didn't even know about that, Tony. Oh, dang. I'm always learning. So, yeah, I find this to be a little bit more effective. I don't know. It is actually not being effective. And this I wonder if like, it's because the color is just outside of the standard. Yeah, it's like the most range resistant chromatic aberration I've ever seen. But I mean, I don't think that takes away from the cute pose and stuff. Yeah. Okay, Ark, he's bailing. <laughs> he's decided to become a dolphin now. Yeah, um, ironically, it actually seems like he has suddenly gone lifeless. <laughs> don't you think his yeah, pose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, still, I think it's a compelling shot. A butterfly shot. Mike McKenna. I love the colors, the, the contrast of the orange and the green. 
Um, I think I, Mike missed focus a little bit. Yeah, I think I that give... actually this far antenna is in focus. So I like to use back button focus for this kind of subject. Focus on the eye and use continuous shutter. And then as you're shooting, just lean your body in and out just slightly like that. And that will change your focusing plane by tiny amounts. And then you'll have one of those shots that's in focus because focusing is never precise on those tiny <gasps> subjects. Speaking of tiny. What? Um, this is actually pretty scary. Like, look at those. I don't know what part of the body that even is, but some sort of fang, right? Oh my gosh. Hardcore. That it, that's, wow. Okay. I love this, this is one. perfect too. Yeah. Give that a pick. a pick. Great expressions. I love the expression. The dad's looking at the baby and then his eye line is drawing you to the baby's face and the baby has a great expression. Um, really cute. Great photo. I like that you did black and white too because a lot of the time baby clothes are really bright and distracting. What? Greg. <laughs> this is so cute and pretty funny. That baby's so happy. Yeah, you get a, did a great job getting a good expression out of the baby. They can be so difficult. This seems like such a happy baby. The clouds are <laughs> really cute. Nicely done. That's really cute. Oh, oh this is, this really is sweet, sweet, too. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, I, I kind of wish the light weren't so intense. Harsh. Yeah. Yeah, so. Because you have the soft romantic background which is the sunset and the colors are really beautiful and it's a romantic moment and then you have a really hard harsh flash so it's not bad i think technically you did a good job but i don't think the mood of the lighting is matching the mood of the shoot yeah so maybe dial the flashback by a stop or two and a, a softer light source might help too uh bling bling the bss of the iss i don't know what that is but I like but this But you have guy. a dog. It's cute. I like this this guy. I like his style. He looks happy. Yeah. Nice job getting him in focus. I want to do a photo shoot with um, our dog, Pixel, but she her eyes never show up. So I know. It makes it so difficult. I think starlings are an underrated bird. I love uh, their iridescence and how they have all of these hidden colors in them and spots. They're beautiful. And I love that this one's jumping and... Kind of like you got really good subject separation. Yeah, the hard light here is perfect so we can see those colors. I just wish at least one bird had was looking towards the camera a little bit. They're all facing away. Yeah. Ooh, it's a lot. Um, it's like a lot of these highlights are very blown out, but I like that you were able to show the busyness of the scene. Um, and maybe I even would have zoomed in past these signs and things yeah, good suggestion. Because the, those are very distracting. And we're so close to being symmetrical here, but we were just slightly off. So yeah, take some time and actually get that building perfectly centered. It's better to do it in camera, but... Good thought. Uh, are these mating dragonflies? That's life. That's certainly a part of life. <laughs> Sunset in north of Italy. This is a beautiful sunset. Yeah, I love the clouds and the colors. There's something just so magical about it. I think it's raining in the distance. So that's interesting. Um, beautiful lighting. Renato, I can make a suggestion. You have some fringing around the horizon here. My eye jumped right to it. Just use a, a bigger graduated filter. And if you search our channel for fringe, you'll see I made a whole video on the topic. I think you could also crop in a little bit because there was a lot going on to the right of the frame that didn't matter. Didn't matter to me. Oh Duck my butts. Gosh. <laughs> Staying alive by feeding, AKA all about butts. I think duck butts are so cute. <laughs> okay, Good let's just know. add a little bit of contrast. I do like that this is a, a slice of life. Just some ladies sitting around enjoying, what are they enjoying? Like yogurts maybe? Interesting. It's cute. Good lighting. Look at that natural framing. Yeah. I love the really color nice. contrast with this, the pinks and the green background. I like that. That's an interesting bird shot to me. I'm going to give you a pick. A rose. <gasps> sure. That's okay. Life like some I water. I guess water is the source of all life. Okay. We're stretching a little. 
Um, again, watch the fringing on the processing there. There's a little bit of like haloing around your that subject. To me. But I like um, the rings in the water in the foreground. I wish that her head were breaking the horizon a little mm -hmm. bit more, but it looks good. Yeah, and maybe even bring up the saturation on the colors because you have some nice yellows and blues in there. You, they were probably more intense to your eye. Um, I think the shot has is great. I think it has a lot of potential and you could probably process it as it is, but. Yeah. I like editing people's pictures. That's like my favorite part of the show. Timothy, Sacred Monkey Forest. This is a beautiful, very sharp shot. Yeah. Um, really good subject separation, a nice blurred background. So your subject is popping, good color contrast. It's a good shot. I can tell it's like at a zoo or something. Well, I know it's the Sacred Monkey Forest. Hmm. I... There's something interesting about this. Yeah, you know what troubles me is that the shadows are just black. Um, if it had, you'd gone out like a little bit earlier in the day, maybe it would have had some more just ambient light on the hills and we could have seen a little more detail to it because they're just like carved out and as a result, most of the frame is just black. Yeah, but that kind of makes it interesting. It's very strange that the light's not spilling more. Alive in Prague by Anshul. I'm sure. troubled by the foremost bird being so blurry like it's biggest because it has its wings spread and i don't know it's just it's he's also taking up a lot of space but you could just kind of maybe maybe get him out of there a little yeah <laughs> i like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm so confused by why is that the reflection why is it different i, I I don't know, but I I like it. Oh, it's double pane glass. Yeah, okay. Well, you made me look at it and Garrett? think about it. Think think about it. Okay, so this is a good example of a bird picture because at least one of the birds is nicely in profile and it's also the bird that's nice and sharp. Yeah. And there's lots of nice colors and stuff too. Good job, Carrot. Chris, we forgot to introduce you. We were having some some issues with your mic. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. We had a pretty rushed intro there. We got to yeah. be lucky enough to have lunch together last week. That was nice to meet you. Yeah, it was great to finally meet you in person. I don't think people realize that in person you are eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But, you know. <laughs> Do you have any questions or comments from people? Yeah, we do. We got a good one here. Uh, in light of the tariffs and things, do you think the ADD is still a worthwhile camera? I don't see why that would change anything. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I don't know where it's going to be manufactured, so it might not even be impacted. But um, we recently asked the question whether DSLRs are dead, and I actually don't think they are. I think Canon and Nikon will both continue manufacturing new DSLR gear for a little while at least. And there is no mirrorless gear that can compete on capabilities and price and just value. If you are looking to get the best results at the lowest price, Canon and Nikon DSLR is still where it's at, especially if you buy used gear from some place like our sponsor, KEH. Yeah. See the way I slip that in? But it's, it's my honest and genuine assessment of it. Like people who want the most bang for the buck used DSLR gear is where it's at right now. What else you got, Chris? Another good question here would be, without without touching on editing or retouching, what top three things do you think differentiates a technically advanced final shot versus a snapshot? In other words, if you look at a picture, what what makes something technically a much more advanced shot versus oh we'll take a picture with you know a snapshot composition is probably a big one because i can tell if somebody just took a picture of a pretty scene or if they actually took the time uh, to think about the foreground and leading lines and natural framing. You see that with street photography a lot. You can see just like a snapshot, something interesting happened. The person just went, uh, oh, it's in the frame and it's exposed versus someone really finding an interesting way uh, to frame everything. And then the second thing would be storytelling because you have to be um, a very comfortable photographer to not really worry about everything being uh, like expose properly, worry about getting the right expressions and the right part of the moment and everything in the scene that needs to 
tell the viewer what they're looking at. You have to kind of develop this objective appreciation of your own photos. I would just put planning on the list. And yeah. by that, I would include everything from like picking a location, picking the right time of day for your lighting, uh, picking the right time of year for the background, and of course, things like styling. Yeah. The clothes that you put on your model. And this picture from Josh Spore is a good example of all those things. Like it's clearly a planned shot. It kind of has a candid feel to it, but we know right away that some planning went into it. This is probably not this kid's normal day-to-day -day outfit, right? Uh, there's a super shallow depth of field that must have taken some care to nail focus on. The lighting is absolutely gorgeous. There was planning that went into this, and that's what separates it from a snapshot. I'm going to give it a pick. We'll look at a couple more pictures, and then I'll talk about the KEH camera of the week, that gold Leica. I almost said solid gold. That would be an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> it is 24 karat gold, though. Um, swans and their signets. Can I just say, don't get any closer than this? <laughs> you don't want to make a swan mad. I learned that the hard way. They're aggressive and mean animals. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. <laughs> this is a tough one. We need a more depth of field here. You can see it's just like parts of it are in focus, but parts of it are way out of focus and we just need to be at a high ref stop metadata said f0 yeah. so that's that's too low this is real cute look at your histogram though do you see how you have really high peaks here to the right of your histogram um your highlights are a bit overexposed Ooh, and you have some funky colors kind of too going on strong suggestion to check the edges of your frame before you take a shot because we clipped off the pup's ears and ears feet and it would have been <laughs> so much better if we could have just seen their feet a little that's bit. That's funny that you confuse yours and feet, but you make me laugh. <laughs> um, I actually think I'd go in and just crop this more to get this bright tombstone less in the picture because it's so the visual weight is really heavy. If you have something very bright in a photo, um, it has a lot of visual weight, which means it's pulling your eye there. And you really want to think about how your eye is being pulled through the photo and what you're looking at. Yeah, and also you're at ISO 1600 here and one twelve fiftieth of a second. This shot of mostly static subjects, you probably could have shot it at one two fiftieth of a second and been at a much lower ISO, producing more detailed and cleaner images. So something to think about. Always try to shoot at the lowest shutter speed possible for that type of shot. <laughs> that looks like me in the pool. I like the expression. <laughs> I like you can see his little funny arms under the water. It's very cute. I think you. I think you might even be able to crop more, get closer. And I have the same suggestion for William. ISO 1600 is way higher than you need to be for this because the frog is not really moving and one one thousandth of a second is unnecessary. So with that camera, you'd want to be shooting at ISO 200 whenever possible, the base ISO. I did a little dehazing. Okay, that's cute. I like this photo. I think this fits the theme really well. Mm -hmm. I like that it's candid and natural. Um, I love the natural framing on it. Yeah. I might go in and make it black and white or go in to your colors here and maybe make the blues a little richer or something. I'd play. I'd play with it. But I like it. I actually think I like the black and white. Timeless. I'm not sure what this is, Chris. What is this? Yeah. Droplets of some sort. It's neat looking. Uh, Stuart has a dandelion photo. And that's very pretty. I like uh, the framing here. It's between these two something or others. Oh, the skyline. So that's neat. Yeah, lighting Good was really colors. nice. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Horrible. Does this look a little bit like Bernie Sanders? <laughs> I, I see the resemblance. I know. I like when they're young and they still have some of that fluff. They look really cute. Oh, great shot of Bertie Sanders, Linda. I'm going to pick. Incredibly detailed. Yeah, that's a great shot. Oh, I like this little moment. I wish that um, it was more in focus. Yeah. Again, continuous lean in and out. Your shutter speed and everything is really good. And I understand why you needed to be at F16. What? It's tough. This is this a, is cool a shot. delightful shot. Yeah, you get a pick. I'll Great contrast. Shot. Really interesting. Um, 
I can make a suggestion though. It's an iPhone shot as well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. These two spots of light right along the left side of the frame, it's really nitpicky, but they're bugging me just a little bit. And so you could edit them out, but I'm just gonna crop them out and make life a little bit easier. See, way better, right? No. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look at one more picture and then I'm going to do the KH camera of the whoa. week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Which one are you loving? That, look the lightning that. one? Is that for real or is this a spooky movie? No, I think it's for real. It's I, like it might be shot through a car window or yeah, another building window. Yeah. A car on the roof. Crazy boy. But yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like the water droplets and the lightning. It's definitely full of energy. I see Silham was going for a Frankenstein reference there. With the title. It's alive. <gasps> oh, I get it. <laughs> Chelsea gets it. Okay, this is the KEH quirky camera of the week. They took it off sale from their store to loan it to me so that I could spend some time with it and tell you guys about it. But KEH has a ton of really fascinating oh, okay. cameras in their store. This is a special edition Leica R3 that they plated in 24 karat gold. It was celebrating a 100th anniversary. What's it say at the top there, Charles? Was it a 100th anniversary? I don't know. Yeah, can you read it? Yeah, 1879 to 1979. Oh, okay. And I... They made a very limited number of them, so they're actually extremely valuable. And to me, that was the hardest part of actually using this camera. Like, how many times did I get this camera ready to bring out and and, and take pictures? And then at the last second, I would leave it home <laughs> because I'd be like, oh, I, I can't do it. I can't bring that to a restaurant. We we had a couple of like wow. parties and stuff, and I thought it would be a good camera to get candid shots with. But then I thought, what are people going to think when I'm walking around the party with a gold Leica? They'd be like, Tony has lost his mind. <laughs> He's literally walking around with like an $8,000 gold <laughs> Leica. The I camera itself. To street photography and I'd be like, judge me all you want. I'm here. Yeah, right. I, I find it so like funny it's because Leicas are known for a few things. Most of all, being discreet. Like they have really quiet shutters. They typically have very small bodies. And this is the opposite of discreets like like Lenny Kravitz would be a little bit embarrassed about this Leica I think I don't think he would be <laughs> have you seen his Leica yeah that's got like snake skin yeah like is a, that what this like is? Ambassador. is this um snake skin on here it's definitely something like that yeah I sure looks like stupid it stupid snake this camera has a metering system it has a battery in it but I think this particular one the battery it died possibly because I left it on <laughs> But it functions just fine without the battery because only the metering system relies on it. So the battery dies, you just keep shooting with it. You focus manually. Here, I'll even take a picture with it. It has a split prism viewfinder, which is super cool. Wait, wait. Uh, turn it on. There we go. That great shutter sound. And then you wind it with your thumb crank like that to put the next, to advance it to the next roll of film to the next frame. I can tell you like doing that. I do. Um, another weird thing about this is it's a Leica, but it's not the M mount. That's what everybody thinks about is there, it, it, this is actually an SLR. So it's got a mirror in there. You're looking through oh. the viewfinder. I actually prefer that because with the Leica M mount cameras, you have to get everything kind of calibrated. It's easy to think things are in focus, but they're not actually in focus. So to me, it's a more practical Leica, even though it's 24 karat gold. Another challenge with this one is you it they only made that one lens in gold so if you were to put on a different lens it would no longer match the body so it's pretty much just this one set that you'd want to use it with unless you wanted to embarrass yourself by walking around with a non-gold lens like what would people think you're very concerned about your camera image and i think that's something we need to talk about another time i mean if you're like a buyer you're thinking about camera image right <laughs> Uh, so if you want to check out this camera or over 55,000 other pieces of used gear at up to 40% off the retail price, head to our sponsor, KEH.com. There's a link down in the description below that will take you right there. They are also a great place if you need to get your gear repaired. Way probably less expensive than the manufacturer could do it. And if you want to sell your gear, maybe you have stuff collecting dust or you want to switch systems head on over to KEH and thanks for making this live show possible. We just sold a shocking amount of things to KEH. We literally shipped a pallet off. And one of the few things we couldn't sell to them was a laptop. And we were like, all right, we'll just sell it on our own. 
it got damaged during shipping and we've been handling an insurance claim on it for what has been three months. I think mm-hmm. it, yeah, it was so, like April or something. Really hoping they would buy computers too so we can just sell everything to them. Yeah, we approached them. They didn't approach us. I said, please buy a bunch of my stuff. And then after we were done, let's talk about a sponsorship because it's such a pain to try to sell your stuff directly to people. Scammers and shipping problems. and Here's something I haven't seen in a while. Planking. Yes, I forgot that that was an internet trend for a while. I just remembered it. I was watching The Office and they had a whole episode on it. And I was like, oh, taking me back. This isn't quite planking, is it? It's like he's just showing off he climbs mountains and he's strong. I'm impressed. Yeah. Quit showing off. And you're not level. Show (laughs) off. (laughs) He needs you as a friend to tell him when he's not level. Let's go through and look. I thought this picture looked so full of life. Like, oh, yeah, Jim. Jim. Awesome shot again, Jim. I'm going to give you a pic. Life. That is so cool. Um, hmm. Are you okay, thinking Jim. about the highlights? Well, I'm thinking about, I yeah, I think it might have been overexposed. The highlights are blown out, but I'm also thinking about the shutter speed. You know how I love slower shutter speeds with water like that. And also you're at ISO 900. Now you're shooting at 15 millimeters. So even the reciprocal rule would have you at 1 15th of a second, but you've got a stabilized lens there. So you could probably be shooting at a quarter of a second and nail it. Just be sure that you take a lot of shots because you have a human subject in there and they might move a little bit. They're gonna move a little bit, but you could, if you took 10 shots at a quarter of a second, I guarantee you'd have one where the water was smoother. The ISO was a lot lower. This and must be Jim. Better. Oh, you think it's a selfie? Or maybe somebody else took it. Mm-hmm. All right. What else? What else catches your eye on the theme of life? Oh, is it Spider-Man? Oh, okay. babies. That's babies are beautiful. cool too. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to do like a square crop on it. Oh, that's oh what, I was going to go exactly what you were thinking. eight by 10 and try, kind of get these distractions out of the way. Yeah, you're right. But and then we had like something in the right corner. And so kind of think about this that. This is a, such a beautiful picture. Yeah, black and white is great for this. We don't need all those like hospital colors in there. Why are hospital colors always so bad? I'm gonna give this a pick. And uh, Tomer, get that ISO down. You don't need to be a one eight hundredth of a second. You can be one one twenty fifth and a lower ISO. What else catches your eye? Oh, well, this wait. Oh, okay. This is fantastic. You made the suggestion before, if you can have the subject break the line of the horizon, it adds so much more depth to it. You could have just gotten down a little bit lower. Their head would have been above the mountain and just, it would have been better. But this is still as it is great. I want to look at Erlen's picture. What? Oh my God, look at that. How did he get the... Is he wearing a cape? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh man. Yeah, you get a This pick. is like Instagram gold. That's gorgeous. Oh, fantastic job. That makes me feel alive. I'm ready for another landscape style trip, Tony. Oh, okay. Iceland Where do you want to go? got me like I want to go to I loved Iceland. um like the Faroe, Faroe Islands yeah. or um the Azores. Oh my gosh. Oklahoma. Now the dog brought a baby. <laughs> Whoa, Joe awesome Baker, shot, this Joe. is so cool. Pick. Uh, and then we talk about planning. This shot had planning, right? He's got lighting. He's got a red gel on the light. He's got some sort of smoke, probably fog in the air. Plus he's like gotten an athlete in. It's it's amazing. The, the gel matches really, the glove. Yeah, I think the styling's really good too. I like that her hair is like a little messy, so it looks like she's been fighting. It's cool. She's she's neat. I like the colors on this one a lot. This is a really cool portrait. Yeah. I like his kind of casual Wait, head tilt. Is that brain in the background? <laughs> yeah, it is. You get a pick, David. Uh okay. Oh, what's this guy? Wow. That looks fun. I wish his friend was like over here instead. Yes, I know. I was trying to think of some way to, I mean, with sports shots like that, you have to anticipate the movement of where they're going to be because he wasn't standing there a split second ago. But you, maybe you could have gone off to the right. Maybe you could have hollowed out the other guy to move. 
depending on your relationship, maybe there's you couldn't have done any of those things. I don't know. That was an amazing shot. Yeah. yeah you got to give that guy a pick. I like the subject separation. You know, you could have had him overlapping one of these poles and that would have ruined it. So that's good. The leading line of the dock into, you know, the background. Um, I like the simplicity of the colors, all of that. And it's on theme as well. So good job. Just watch that edge glow. There's a little bit of post-processing artifacts. So this is really nice. Really nice job balancing the foreground exposure with that background light. You have some sort of flash there. Um, I would match the color. Yeah, I wanted to say like... A, the like Oh, okay. That actually helps a lot. So if you have a warm sunset in the background and you're putting a flash on your subject and it's making it cool, then then you have these... It can look weird unless you go the other way and make it intentionally contrasting with gels. But that, just warm up the photo because uh, the natural light source would have made it warm. Yeah, if we're using a flash at sunset or a flash to simulate sunset, we're putting a, like a yellow or light orange gel on it just to better balance the color because otherwise it looks weird. Wow. Wow. That's very cool. I like the horse's expression. Yeah, that's that's a great moment. It's tough shooting that at night. What else do we have here? Chris, do you have any questions or comments for us? Sure do. Good one here. And, and, and this is has more to do with editing, but with the new texture slider in Lightroom, Tony, yeah. tell us the, when do you use texture versus clarity or do you use them together? Here's the difference. Clarity will impact all parts of the picture equally. Texture is simply smarter. It will look for so, it, like in focus subjects and increase their texture. So if you've taken a picture of a bird on a blurry background like this, um, clarity would do things like accentuate the detail in the background there, which looks kind of ugly. And if you do texture, you can see it doesn't quite do it the same. Wait, Most... I think it did. Look. It, it definitely impacted the background some. It's not supposed to. The changes are supposed to be focused just on the foreground, and clearly it's not working there. Um, I've been using it off and on for a while, but mostly I was telling you what Adobe told me about it, and yeah. <laughs> it looks like, at least in this particular example, it's not delivering exactly what they said, and that it's not separating the subject perfectly. I'm it seeing... certainly would be nice, because you don't want texture to be accentuating the noise in the sky, which is what's happening here. So but it's that doing that it's in both instances, but when I put the clarity slider up, you're also getting really severe contrast mm -hmm. differences. And when I do the texture, it seems to just be doing more fine details and less contrast. You see that? Yeah. And it's not impacting the color as much. Yeah. I. It almost feels to me like texture is a replacement for clarity. I've almost stopped using clarity. But um, for me, texture is perfect for wildlife photos. Texture almost always makes wildlife photos better. And now it's like part of my default preset for Lightroom where I add some amount of texture. Yeah. For wildlife Interesting. I had just been using texture since it came up too. It, look how clunky clarity is by comparison. It looks like bad HDR from like <laughs> seven years ago. Texture is also uh, good with portraits. You can dial in negative texture and just smooth things out just a little bit if you're doing some quick thing. Oh, look I've how been... young this guy looks now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what clarity does. Oh. Ooh, I think I've seen this done on portraits before. <laughs> it looks like he got his picture taken at the mall in 1989. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. That was a good experiment for all of us, I feel. Uh, this is the I kind of he... portrait where you might actually crank texture up a little bit because, you know, it's moody and it. maybe you want to... Yeah, the, the framing here is not quite odd enough to be deliberate. And so... Either it's deliberately off center or we need to go ahead and make it balanced. So I went ahead and made it balanced. Yeah, I was thinking also like eight by 10. And just bring his eyes up in the frame a little bit. Preston, great shot. You got a really good Preston. expression out of him. If you want to be nitpicky, I might just go in and brush out the line of his bifocals there. But he did a good job of not catching any of the reflections on his lenses. I have never seen a maternity shot like this. I don't like it. Okay. 
Uh, it kind of scares me. Why is that pregnant lady a bad cop? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's right. We have a baptism here. It's a really nice moment. Our dog has decided to be angry about something in the studio. <laughs> We didn't give her a walk yesterday, and she find, she entertains herself if we don't do that. And so this is our life now. Whoa, that's oh. a cool shot. Yeah, I this is not a mockingbird, but it sure looks like one. Uh, awesome Very shot. Interesting. Good, I like there you are. good a good profile of the bird. Good subject separation. Look at the little foot coming up too. Incredible amounts of detail. Um, and another case where you didn't have to be at one sixteen hundred. Like that's yes. better for them flying, but you definitely oh. could have hit that at one three hundred, one four hundredth of a second. What else is catching your eye? Oh, this is like a good slice of life. What a good memory. Yeah, but we got that foot in the upper right corner. I noticed oh. that too. We can take that out. Sometimes I like to do um, this just to watch it fail. <laughs> <laughs> and man, what's up with those kids? They're not watching their friend jump off. Like this would have been a better shot if they were looking at him, but like their friend, like that's not interesting enough for you. What are you looking at? What's off to the right? Sneaker kid. <laughs> Actually, you did a pretty good job of cloning that, Charles. That's pretty, that's good enough. And stick that on Instagram. I'm not proud of it. Um, I also love shots like this if you can get lower, if you can get beneath the subject. It adds a lot to the height, but I think this one's still turned out great. What you doing? Where's your baby? Poodles are smart, they said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we should uh, take another question. Toss it back to Chris for a question mm -hmm. and then get out of here. What you got for us, Chris? Uh, the lighting here. Oh, I'm Chris sorry, Chris, muted. you've been muted and I, I wasn't looking at you, so I didn't know. All right. When you go to the when you go to a new country for the first time, how do you guys research photo sites that aren't on the list of like top tourist traps? Well, we're lucky in that we know a lot of photographers. So we'll tend to reach out to somebody local or somebody who has visited the place multiple times in the past. And that's the best thing you can do is to have those personal relationships. Um I will also look at um Google photos they yeah. often have location-based images and that will help me kind of seek things out but i don't know lately there's so much junk in there it can be kind of hard to find things what do you think jules um well google photos helps and also um i'll just look up photography from the area and another thing that we do that we've had a lot of luck with other than having a like a friend show us around is um just plan a somewhat scenic route people will talk about things being scenic even if they're not photographers and then we just try to go find our own location because i don't really like shooting the same thing over and over again anyway and often for us it's just fun to stumble upon something so we've had a lot of luck with that yeah and sometimes it goes horribly wrong i'm not gonna lie to you guys we've broken down we've come home without pictures we've been trapped in rainstorms and broken all of our gear but sometimes it goes well <laughs> It's always a, it's always an adventure. This is true. This is an amazing photo. Now, yeah. is this real or is this one of like is this one of those times where if I saw the picture being taken there'd be like 20 photographers and this kid is a paid model. I'm I'm so suspicious now. It's you know what it's probably a paid model. I mean, what are the odds that this kid just hangs out with Willabeast or whatever these are? <laughs> <laughs> like is that his usual seating location? I don't know, but this is an amazing photo either way. Yeah, either way, it's a great shot. All right. Yeah, it's it's tough. We know too much, so we start to look inside the photo and under, try to understand cool. the circumstances behind it. Yeah, I thought that. Can I, I tell that you? truck picture was great. One more photo tip for when you're traveling: just stop and get the picture, because there have been so many times when I'll say, "Oh, that looks nice," and then you just keep driving. Stop. Just insist and say stop. And I've had some of my favorite pictures when I'm like on a road trip and I say I want a picture of that. And then I tell the driver like, no, really, actually stop. Right. Like we did that in Iceland. Yeah. And we did that in California. And that's stop, Eric, stop the van. No, but you too. I'd be like, that's nice. And then we'd be going like 100 miles per hour past it. And I'd be like, it was so nice. And you have to just like make yourself be late for dinner, which is really hard. Okay. 
really beautiful pictures. Um, next week, our theme is going to be street photography, so that's a little more conventional. I'll think of a more creative photo topic for the next one. Thank you, KEH Camera, for sponsoring the show and also for making our lives selling our gear a little bit easier. If you would like to buy some gear and not pay full price, get something used and reliable and something that you know has been checked by pro professionals, you can check out KEH Camera. And, you know, don't be afraid to buy new stuff and sell your old stuff. That's what we do. Yeah, they'll come with a 180-day warranty. So it's used, but you don't have any worries about it all and you have a 14 day return window you can check rocks. yeah i like them a lot i'm excited we found them um and you can go into the description below and get links to all that stuff all right thanks to everybody who sent pictures in thanks to keh and we will see you next week reviewing your street photos thanks chris thanks justin Hi, bye guys bye. <laughs> oh my that is all pixel you're such a little what gremlin. are you growling at you're such a little gremlin.